anyone listening who is who is either currently in this Swiss Peanut, come here, come here, come here, Peanut, you're ruining it. Come here. <laughs> Ruin it for yourself and everyone oh, else. <laughs> You're listening to the Travelers Podcast, a podcast for the over 30s who like to travel. We're your hosts, Leanne and Al Elliott, and we're a husband and wife team who've been full time travelers since 2017. You can follow our adventures. See our honest reviews and get links to everything mentioned in this podcast at travellers.com. Welcome to the Travellers Podcast. Today's episode, we're talking about lifestyle choice. That is how to have a better quality of life while still pursuing your career. To help us do that, we're talking to the CFO of SG Kleinwart Hambro's Bank in Gibraltar. Originally hailing from Guernsey, he's travelled all over the world during his career, including two years in the city. In 2014, he moved to Soto Grande in the Cadiz province of Andalusia in southern Spain. Please welcome to the podcast, Paul Henning. Thank you. (laughs) So tell us a bit more about your story, Paul. How did you get from your home in Guernsey to Soto Grande? Well, I guess it all started with my career path. Um, Just thinking thinking ahead, what would... Because I obviously like travelling. I've was fortunate enough to travel a fair amount with my family when I was growing up. Um, and my father was a chartered accountant, so I thought, well, what better route to sort of travel around the world is to be a chartered accountant. I think mm-hmm. uh, lots of countries need accountants, so it seemed to be a good choice. And I opted to train with KPMG and become a chartered accountant mm-hmm. and went from there. So as soon as I qualified, uh, I left the firm and went travelling around uh, to sort of Asia on to Australia. So with some friends, travelled around Australia for a good few months uh, before deciding I needed to get back into the real world and earn some money. <laughs> uh, so I, I landed a job in, in corporate finance working in, in central Sydney. Mm-hmm. And I was doing that for about three and a half years. Uh, obviously, beautiful place to be living, uh, very enjoyable place. Um, and made the most of travelling around the, the great country of Australia whilst I was there. Fantastic. Um, and so sort of after that, uh, I decided to return to Guernsey, where my roots and, and family and friends are, um, and went back to a company I used to be the in-charge auditor for, uh, being Credit Suisse, obviously a, a fairly global company, and also the potential to travel around the world with that company as well. Mm-hmm. So after spending probably the best part of three and a half, four years working at Credit Suisse in Guernsey. Uh, I moved to their London office uh, where I was working on various different uh, projects, trying to move away from from the usual boring year-end, month-end work of of an accountant into some different project work to, I guess, broaden my experience and profile. Uh, And that allowed me to travel to places like uh, Zurich and Singapore, working on various IT projects and working with the business. Um, obviously, while while living in London for those two years, I made the most of of being next to the the big central hubs, the airports, and mm-hmm. and buying the cost effective flights. Uh, obviously, not my favourite airline, but obviously Ryanair gives you very cheap <laughs> cheap ways of getting to lots of different destinations around yeah. Europe. And um, and made sure I made made the most of that, which is yeah, really great. Obviously, to experience all the different places. Obviously, whilst keeping a, a full time job. Um, I mean, obviously, from my point of view, in terms of career-wise, that going on a different different track, it was more of a, I guess, a lifestyle choice to broaden my, uh, I guess, horizons and mm-hmm. and experience something different. So, living and working in a city, obviously, Guernsey being a a fairly quiet, tranquil place, very nice place, obviously, but just wanted to experience something that was a bit more lively and and see what working in the city was like. And after a couple of years there, um, I had the opportunity to be transferred down to the Gibraltar office of Credit Suisse mm-hmm. to implement uh, some new new projects and also act as the financial controller there for, for a year. So I was down there uh, living in, in Soto Grande in Spain and then commuting across the border on a daily basis, So, mm-hmm. uh, which was quite enjoyable. Obviously, living in southern Spain, you have... Uh, 
much better climate, uh, long long summer days, beaches close by, uh, mm. plenty of golf and, and outdoor sports, which is suiting me well as I love a lot of sailing. So being close to the water has always, yeah. always been very nice. So set the scene a bit for us, Paul. Tell us a bit more about your, your home and your life in Soto Grande. Um, well, obviously living in Soto Grande and then commuting into Gibraltar is it's a fairly easy commute as commutes go. Uh, there's no traffic to speak of, so it's literally hopping in the car, 20-minute drive to the border. Mm-hmm. Um, I've, I've chosen not to uh, get stuck in queues either going into or coming out of Gibraltar as the the customs and the passport control can can create quite a lot of queues, so you could be stuck from anywhere up to twenty minutes to two to four hours. Mm-hmm. So I'll park the car underground and then cycle across the border, um, ten minute cycle to the office. Um, mm-hmm. That's sort of a fairly easy commute. Absolutely. I guess we should explain for any of our listeners who aren't familiar with with Gibraltar. Gibraltar is um, a, a peninsula on the the southern tip of Spain, which is actually um, British territory. Um, so when Paul's talking about going across the border and passport control, you are essentially passing from from Spain into into the UK. Yeah, that's correct. How does that? Um, I mean, guess tell us a bit more about about working in in Gibraltar. Um, I mean, it's it's working in a. I work in a bank, obviously, and it, it's it's the same sort of work, uh, much less stressful environment. But you you take it's more of a lifestyle choice, really, to to live in the southern area of Spain and, and enjoy the climate, the mm-hmm. the tranquil nature of. <laughs> should, should <we> maybe? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's it. Just yeah, just to let you know, we're actually sat at the moment in Paul's gorgeous villa in Soto Grande outside the terrace, and that is one of um, one of the three dogs we've got running around having a well-needed drink of water. So, <laughs> so that's what you could hear there. Sorry, Paul, you were saying so. Um, so yeah, working in working in Gibraltar, how does it how does it compare to when you worked when you've worked in other places? So working in a in a city, for example, whether it be Sydney or London, obviously it's a much more high pressure environment. You're working much longer hours. Uh, commuting is a bit more of a hassle. Uh, you're living in a either an apartment or you know, a, lo- a large property, but obviously the larger the property, the further away you, you live from your office. Mm-hmm. Whereas living down here for the for the cost of renting a two bedroom apartment, you can have a four bedroom villa with a swimming pool. So wow, really, why not? Yeah, absolutely. So I and moving down to the role in Gibraltar is obviously much much less stress. Much fewer hours, um, and I guess the flip side of that is is you take a significant pay cut from moving from the city to to somewhere like Gibraltar. But it's it's really about the quality of life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have long hours of sunshine, a much more relaxed lifestyle, much more freedom to to do any any sports you particularly want to do. So, for example, I love doing a lot of yacht racing or or playing golf, tennis, or or getting out on my paddleboard, just rocking down to the beach and mm-hmm. going out for an hour's paddle. Whereas living in the city, there's, there's no way you could be doing all those outdoor sports. Mm-hmm. But it's it's sort of living in the in this region with the sun. Sun always makes people smile. I think you could agree. Yeah, so it's it, it helps with the stress. So tell us a bit more about your your work life balance. Roughly speaking, what time do you start work? Finish work? What do you do with your evenings? Your weekends? Um, I, for me, I'd say it's a fairly ideal uh, life, lifestyle balance between work and, and personal time. Uh, probably leaving the house around eight, quarter past eight, and I can be in the office around probably quarter to nine, um, have, do my day in the office, and I could be leaving five o'clock, quarter past five, and be in the pool by six o'clock. You know, fairly, yeah, yeah. fairly, fairly perfect, really. And if I need to do longer hours, I have the flexibility to be able to work from home. So I can just log in later in the evening and just finish mm-hmm. off the day's work, but whilst enjoying the outdoor lifestyle. So I may, mm-hmm. may go and play golf after work or stick my paddleboard on top of the car and, and drive down to the beach down the road and just go for a quick mm-hmm. paddle. It's uh, fairly ideal, really. You're painting a perfect picture. So what what are the down, downsides? Are there any downsides? I mean, I guess, I guess definitely there are a down, there's some downsides to living in the tranquility. You, I do miss a bit of the, uh, I guess, the buzz that you have from a city with, with all the things going on. Um, so that is the drawback of living in away and all the, amongst the golf courses and all the greenery around. Mm. Much less people, much less, less life around. 
So, yeah, I think that's probably one of the reasons why I'm looking to move into Gibraltar for the winter months mm -hmm. and keep this place for the for the summer months and maybe the weekends. <laughs> Yeah, so it's just the best of best of both worlds. Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic. So, how is how is traveling and and living abroad influenced your career? Um, I'd say sort of my career choices in terms of moving around the place has more been just for the experiences and the lifestyle rather than progressing my career as as well as I could have done. Definitely, it's probably set it back a little. But but I, I quite value the the personal choices and the lifestyle. So as long as I'm happy, I'm I'm not too fussed, really. Yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Did you? I mean, have there ever been any any hard moments? Any moments where you've 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 second guessed your choices or wanted to give up? Yeah, I mean, definitely. Obviously, building a new network of friends takes quite a long time if you keep moving around, and I've I still value. My close friends that I have back in Guernsey, uh, really close group of friends, probably still still my best group of friends, uh, are the ones I grew up with and went to college with. Mm -hmm. So so I do miss that close network. Mm -hmm. But but then, you know, they'll come out and visit me and I I can frequently go back to the island of Guernsey and and see them. So it's yeah. you know, I know they're always there for me if I need them and likewise I'm always there for them. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Would you ever consider going back to, to Guernsey or the UK? Um, I'm sure that's definitely an option. Probably probably Guernsey more than the UK, given that my family are, are based in Guernsey. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely a pos possibility. I still have some property there that's rented out, so it's it's not too difficult to, a choice. Uh, Guernsey being an, an offshore financial services industry, uh, there'd definitely be some positions there should I wish to move back. Mm -hmm. But for the time being, I think I'm quite enjoying living in the south of Spain with the, with the sunshine and the hot weather and, yeah. and the outdoor lifestyle. Yeah. How does how does Guernsey? Because I we've never actually been to Guernsey. How does Guernsey life compare to to UK mainland life? Uh, probably very different to the UK mainland life. I mean, Guernsey's a fairly small island, only about twenty four square miles, uh, sixty odd thousand inhabitants. Uh, very tranquil, probably slightly better weather than the UK, I would say, overall. Uh, nice long summers, uh, long hours of sunshine, clear skies, very little pollution, um, very low crime rates. So it's it's a very peaceful way of life. And obviously some fantastic restaurants, uh, specifically seafood. Given, given the situation in the island, we have sort of lobsters and crabs and good mm. good fish aplenty. So it's not all bad. So if there's anyone currently listening who is in a C-suite role or is looking at, at ways to, to better balance their their career with their lifestyle, is there any advice that you'd give them? Uh, that's a difficult question, really. I mean, follow your heart, really. I mean, career is not be-all and end-all. But If you can still make ends meet by, by taking different choices, your happiness at the end of the day is paramount. Mm -hmm. So, So rather than sort of gunning to progress your career as quickly as possible. You'll get there one day, but there's mm -hmm. there's no rush really. Why stress yourself out? Just uh, take your time and enjoy life. Absolutely. So no regrets? Um, I don't think so, no. Yeah. no. Brilliant. So what does, what does the future look like? Well, obviously, as I said, I'm looking to move into Gibraltar during the, the winter months, um, mainly for... For a bit of, oh, for tax reasons, but also for a bit more life. So obviously being, being in Sota Grande in the winter months, it's a very quiet place to be. Mm -hmm. Not much going on. If I'm living in Gibraltar, there's much more activity, um, much closer to the office. I can be a lot, do a lot more social events with the office and not have to worry about how I'm going to get back into Spain and get back mm -hmm. home. So I think it's, yeah. Fantastic. And just for our listeners, as we do have the opportunity to ask this question of a KPMG trained accountant, if anyone is considering living in, in Spain or Gibraltar, what are the, the current tax implications and what should people know? Um, well, Gibraltar is a low tax jurisdiction, so it's very favourable, uh, very low taxes, uh, good quality of life. So you can either, well, as, as I said earlier, you could either rent in an apartment in Gibraltar. The flip side is you could also rent a villa with a pool for the same money in Spain. Mm -hmm. But then if you're resident in Spain, you could be paying anywhere up to 46% tax. Mm -hmm. So you'll be paying the difference between the tax you pay in Gibraltar to the Spanish uh, tax authorities. Right. So whilst you have the quality of life with a, with a much bigger house and, a, and enjoy the pool, 
you are paying a lot more tax. Mm. But but that's again a lifestyle choice. Yeah, I guess that's it, isn't it? It's all all little little decisions along the way that yeah. you need to make. Is any words of wisdom, Paul? Um, any final thoughts of somebody who's considering this type of career change or lifestyle choice? Um, well, I, I guess it all started with my choice of of the career as a chartered accountant. I mean, it's not not as boring as people think. It's not just the bean counter, be all and end all. Um, there's plenty of choices out there. Um, it's, the, the world is your oyster, effectively. Fantastic. Brilliant. Paul, thank you so much for speaking today. And thank you as well to, to Mia, Pina and Bruno who have been providing a, a background soundtrack during our episode today. <laughs> uh, we are currently sat outside on the gorgeous terrace in, in Paul's four-bed villa in Soto Grande. So, so yeah, sitting outside does come with the, the background noise. So if you'd like more information about anything we've talked about today, you can head to our website, travelers.com forward slash podcast, where you'll find all today's show notes. You've been listening to the Thravelers podcast. Thanks for listening and head on over to thravelers.com for all the show notes and links mentioned in the show.